uh, to introduce us with the different caves found in Region 4A in Calabarzon, may I call on Forester Maylin M. Gekolea Lavinia, the representative from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources 4A. Oh, sorry. So let me introduce her first as well. So Forrester uh, Lavinia is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Forestry from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. Uh, she is a planning officer five, is a uh, licensed forester. She also has a master's degree in public affairs with a major in local governance and development from UPLB. She has honed her knowledge and skills in the area of environment and natural resources program or project implementation planning and management since 2001, attending various local learning events related to environmental and natural resources management. She is currently designated as in charge at the DNR Calabarzon Conservation and Development Division. Everyone, our speaker, Forrester Mylene M. Gekolea Lavinia. Thank you so much, Sir Boni. Please allow me to share my presentation. Is everyone can clearly see my presentation? If I may ask first. Okay, thank you so much, Sir Florente, for that thumbs up. So following the topic as uh, specified in our program, uh, but by the way, uh, a pleasant day to all our participants and viewers in this webinar series uh, facilitated by the UPLB MNH, and also a happy 46th anniversary for the UPLB MNH. So on behalf of our Executive Director, Nilo Bita Moria, please allow me to present our updates on classified and unclassified caves and cave conservation and management uh, activities in Calabarzon. My outline of the presentation would be on the legal basis of our program impl implementation, updates on cave management, protection, and conservation, the challenges and threats that we are uh, actually experiencing while we manage our caves and caves resources. First, of course, we are guided with these issuances as we implement uh, the program on cave management. The Republic Act number 9072, which was uh, issued in 2001, or the National Caves and Cave Resources Management and Protection Act. And with this, the DNR issued the Department of Administrative Order number 1994, the 04, establishing the cave management and conservation program and providing funds thereof. Also, the IRR or the Implementing Rules and Regulations of the RA9072 was issued on 2003. So through DAO number 2003-29. And then further, the DNR issued a memorandum circular 2007-04 for the procedure on cave classification. And also with the issuance of 2007-34 DNR administrative order, we were also guided, it is continuously being guided on how to manage and uh, address the treasure hunting and caves. Also, with the issuance of the Den Pau B or the Protected Area Wildlife Bureau Technical Bulletin Number 2013-06, uh, we have provided with the DNR LGU MOA template. And then with the issuance of the Pau B Technical Bulletin Number 2013-05, we have also provided with guidelines or template on the DNR LGU Landowner MOA template because we have, been, we have also been assessing some caves within private lands. So also to continue, the BMB or the Biodiversity Management Bureau issued a technical bulletin number 2016-10 regarding the outline of cave or wetland management plan. And then also in 2017, the BMB issued a technical bulletin number 2017-01 or the guidelines in safeguarding caves utilized in ecotourism. Further, the BMB issued a technical bulletin number 2018-07 or the guidelines governing the naming of caves. And also this year, 
the very recent guidelines we have is the Department Administrative Order Number 2021-34. This is all about the guidelines for the establishment and implementation of the Cave Management Protection and Conservation Program. With regard to the caves within protected area, these should be uh, endorsed, properly endorsed or recommended by the PAMB concerned. With regard to the collection of resources, of course, we are guided with the Republic Act Number no. 9147, Series of 2001, or the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act. Just to highlight the content of our guidelines as we classify our caves within our region. We have this class one classification of our caves in which um, we refer to caves with delicate and fragile geological formations, threatened species, archeological and paleontological values and extremely hazardous conditions. The allowable use for these caves may include mapping, photography, educational and scientific purposes. For the class two classification of cave, these pertain to caves with areas or portions that have as hazardous conditions and contain sensitive geological, biological, archeological, cultural, historical, and biological values of high quality system. It may be necessary to close sections of these caves seasonally or permanently. It is only open to experienced cavers or guided educational tours visits. For the class three classification of our caves, we refer to caves that are generally safe to inexperienced visitors with no known threatened species, archeological, geological, cultural, and historical values. These caves may also be utilized for economic purposes such as one extraction and edible birds nest collection. As we implement our cave management protection and conservation, the DNR is focused on three major activity. We identify through inventory, we assess, and then we, uh, we map, we survey, we assess, and then we assist as well the LGUs in preparing the five-year management plan. For the status of our cave classification in our region specifically, as of calendar year 2021, we have more than 80 caves inventoried. And out of that, we have already recommended classification for 61 caves, of which we recommended 16 for the class one level, 39 for the class two, and six for the class three. Out of that 61 caves that we have assessed, we have already classified officially through issuance of DNR Memorandum Circular 33 caves. For the distribution per province, we have recorded the following. For Batangas, in which we have assessed one cave and classified as well. For Cavite, we have also one cave assessed and classified as well. For Laguna, we have assessed six caves, and we have officially classified five out of the six. For Quezon province, we have assessed 44 caves, wherein we have already officially classified 21 caves. For Rizal, we have assessed nine, but we have officially classified only five. For a total of 65 caves assessed and officially classified 33. We have available fig, um, details or data for these figures, but I was uh, limited to present only uh, the pictures. But if you would allow me to present in Excel form later on, for those who would want to ask for specific names and location. This is just an example of the map output when we do survey, mapping, and assessment of our cave. This is for the Mona Cave in Ginyangan, Quezon. As you can see in the legend, the cave wall, the width of stations, survey leg, 
So this is the way we do survey mapping and assessment of our cave. This is also an example of a map for Bantayan Cave located in the municipality of Atimon and Quezon, specifically in Barangay Malinaw, Ilaya. This is the QPL Cave 3, as you can see, uh, where on the process of properly naming our cave with the issuance of technical bulletin. So upon completion of the assessment, we will be designating appropriate name for this cave. So this QPL Cave 3 is specifically located in Malino Ilaya, Pagbilaw, Quezon. Also, we have this map for Gating Cave, located also in Malino Ilaya, Atimonan, Quezon. We have also been advocating the presentation of our programs through geospatial. And with this presentation, we attempted to locate geographically the location point of each of our caves. And we're actually on the process of completing the information. As you can see, those with red dots are considered or tagged as assessed caves within our region. This area is in Rizal. This in Quezon. And this one in Cavite and the lower part Batangas. For per classification, we have this green dot for class one caves distributed all throughout our region, the class two in yellow dots and class three in red dots. For classified caves, we have plotted on the map these locations. Again, we are, we are still in the process of completing our geotag locations of our caves. For class one classified caves, these are the locations. For the class two caves, in Quezon, Rizal. And for the class three, which is in Cavite, as well as in Quezon, but, but we are uh, yet to secure the specific uh, technical description and location point of some of those caves. Just to show to you some photos, as we assess our caves, this is in Mona Cave. Again, sample photo of cave assessment with our DNR personnel together with the rest of other members of our regional assessment team. We're in, of course, the MNH is also a member of our team. Another photo of actual assessment. For the challenges and threats that we are currently experiencing based on our reports, we also been experiencing some illegal collection of cave resources. We have also noted some treasure hunting that uh, have been observing and being reported to us. And also, we have been observing damaged excavated caves while we do assessment. With these challenges and threats, we present these sustained efforts and our way forward to ensure that we effectively and efficiently implement our cave management conservation and protection program. First, we need to cleanse our baseline data 
and enhance our in-house online portal on cave management protection and conservation through our DNR Calabarzon Operations Center. Uh, please allow me to uh, present also to you the information on this operation center that we would want to really enhance all our programs in which all our stakeholders could easily access information and at the same time, our actions and responses would also be immediate and in line with the current need of our stakeholders. Second is the intensification of advocacy and protection activities. For the moment, we have very limited activity in advocating the proper and effective management of our caves. As I have previously mentioned, the DNR is focused on the three major activities in managing our cave, the identification, survey mapping and assessment, and assistance in the preparation of management plan. The implementation aspect is large or is the main responsibility of the local government units along with the partner stakeholder if it is within the private land. The third one is we need to continuously classify our caves. The fourth one, we need to continuously enhance the preparation and updating of our cave management plans. And the last, we need to intensify our monitoring and provision of technical assistance. That's all. Thank you very much and a good day to all. Thank you so much, Forrester Lavinia. Um, good afternoon, everybody. This is Professor Ivy Amor Lambio, curator for Moses of the Museum of Natural History, and I will be facilitating the open forum. So are there any questions that you would like to raise uh, so that uh, Forrester Lavinia can answer them? I'll check the chat box here. Anybody from the audience? None? Uh, Ma'am Lavinia, maybe you can share with us. Uh, earlier, you were mentioning about the uh, naming of caves that are as an Excel file. Maybe you can show some of the audience that page, if you may. Yes, Miss Ivy. Yes, for Please allow me to share my file. Floor. It's nice to know that there are a lot of caves that are already assessed in, in Calabarzon area. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for with our very limited uh, budget. Yeah. We're really trying to assess all our caves. Oh, so ang um, inyong uh almost half already of the caves have been assessed, right? So you started with have been classified years. also. Yeah. More than fifty percent were assessed. Yes. And thirty percent, uh, fifty percent have also been uh. Officially classified. Okay. That's good Can you now know. view the file? Yes, po. Okay. okay po. So very nice. Uh, usually, paano nga po tayo nag-name ng caves? Parang mong po siyang naming of scientific name, dumadaan dun po ba siya sa panel <laughs> ng mga tao? Yes, po. Oh, yes, po. <laughs> oh, po. <laughs> yes, po. Um, recommended by the LGU and the stakeholder and then i-assess po. Uh, at some point, it depends on the features of the cave. Napakahalaga din po yun. So, these some are the least. Caves, yeah, some of these caves already have names given by locals, right? Yes uh -oh. po, ma'am. Uh -oh. So, it would it be a parang priority na i-retain yung names that have already been given by locals? For... Okay lang naman po. Yes, ma'am. Okay lang naman po. But, um... Even right now, there are new caves that are being discovered, right? Yes, po. So, some of the people from the Museum of Natural History have been to 
a number of these caves already, especially those ones in Polillo. Right? I think we already assessed around 11 caves in Polillo. I am not sure if all of them are in your list already. In sa Puting Bato. Okay? Where we usually frequent that area. Okay? Yes, ma'am. That's yeah. why this activity is very important for us to um, harmonize our uh, target areas for assessment. Um, if I'm not mistaken, only a few are actually allowed uh, public uh, entry, right? The rest yes, have been classified as two and three. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma caves na have been, um, there are some caves that are accessed by the public. But upon assessment, uh, rather, tourist spot of local areas, what about cases of uh, these open or for tourist caves, tapos assess, ang magiging assessment yung ay class 1 or kaya class 2. Um, how do you go about telling the local stakeholders na ay medyo limited ng inyong pagpapapasok dito? Considering that this is a source of income for them, especially for mga tourists. Well, those activities is part of the implementation of the management plan. After the assessment uh, and uh, classification, we should uh, immediately prepare the appropriate management plan para po maikaskade natin sa mga community at mapagtibay pa natin kung ano yung advocacy na dapat maiparating sa kanila. Kung wala pong uh, uh, appropriate management plan, medyo mahirapan po tayong mag-implement ng proper advocacy as well and the protection activity. So, so is it is it part of the program of yung uh yung uh, tag dito, uh also encouraging or teaching yung locals natin on how to properly uh assess ano uh, not assess but actually conserve yung caves natin yung importance of yung local stakeholders natin kasi we think of them as sila yung unang frontliner na mag-implement nung gusto nating makuha and ano yung benefits ng of them conserving versus getting the resources in these particular areas okay so part ba yun ng ano parang um, plan natin of educating yung locals natin about this yes po ma'am part po at hindi po yes. pwedeng mawala <laughs> thank you po thank you po, po talaga ma'am yung we are glad of that assurance po ng ano na hindi po sila uh, kalayo po dun sa plano po natin para magamit po natin itong mga caves. Hindi lang po natin na sa gobyerno at sa panalo, but also yung local communities natin. Thank you po. Meron yes, po um, isang tanong dito sa, sa chat box na nakadirect sa akin. Uh, bakit po iba po ang number of classified sa assess caves? Or bakit po daw sila ay hindi the same? So, uh, paulit po ma'am. Bakit daw magkaiba ang number ng classified caves dun sa number of assessed caves natin? Bakit hindi daw nagtatag mo yung number? Yes po ma'am. Um, kaya po sila hindi magkapareho sa, uh, at the local level, sa aming level po, sa atin na nag-implement ng program, we do assess and recommend recommendatory level pa lamang po sa amin and then eventually ang official classification is through issuance ng DNR memorandum circular na ginagawa naman po sa central office. So nangyayari po na meron na po tayong na-recommend for classification pero hindi pa lamang po na officially classify through issuance of memorandum circular. Thank you po. It's good to know po. So if lahat po ng na-assess po natin ay already or recommended na sila for a certain classification. Naghihintay yes. na lang po tayo ng, ng sagot po galing sa taas. Okay. Salamat yes, po. Okay. I think wala ng katunungan for now. Um, so, I'll, we'll end the open forum. And probably if you think of some questions a little bit later, you can put it also again in the chat box. And si Ma'am Lavinia, if she's still around, may be able to answer it later on sa other portion ng ating open forum. Thank you, Forrester Lavinia. Okay. And with that, we'd so like to present you with a certificate of appreciation. Okay. May I read the um, inscriptions? This certificate of appreciation is awarded to 
by Lynn M. Gecolea Lavinia for serving as resource person during the UPLB Museum of Natural History's special webinar on research and partnership on cave programs, given on this 29th day of September 2022 during the museum's 46th anniversary celebration with the theme, Continuous Excellence Through Adversity, Creating Partnerships, Fulfill Fruitful Research and Digitized Collections, signed by MNH Director Marian P. De Leon. Ito po, ma'am.